Don't be ashamed to learn things that you need to know. Here's Sexplanations with Dr. Doe. Sexplanations podcast, episode six. Let's talk about growing up in the Victorian era, which neither of us have done, when masturbation was linked to insanity and all the tangential sex things that come from unscripted conversations with yours truly, Lindsay Doe. Are you ready? I'm... uh... I'm ready. Okay. So you are Hank Green. Hi. You've done a lot of amazing things, which we can go into. But one of them that I really appreciate is that you pretended to be Havelock Ellis, mm-hmm. a sexologist from the Victorian era, mm-hmm. on Sexplanation's YouTube channel. Early days, yeah. Yeah. It was episode six. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Super early days. Yeah, I did. And I, uh, I, I got on a scooter and I wore a fake beard and I looked uncomfortable about masturbation and all of those things. Yeah, because Havelock's story, do you remember it? Yeah. Do you want me to remind you? I, I can remind you. Okay, remind me. So let me see if I get it right. Havelock Ellis is a rich white guy from England, maybe? Yeah, let's go with it. Sure. Uh, and he's traveling around in, in, like, in a boat, it seems, yes. is what I'm remembering. Well, he was not a rich white guy then. He was a child then, right? Right, he, he was, was a like rich child. Eight. He's a rich white child. Yeah. He's traveling around in a boat, meets somebody who teaches him about masturbation, Mm -hmm. another child. Yes. And then he, something, something, but it's like uh, people think that it's all kinds of like bad things will happen to you. If you masturbate. And so instead, he just has lots of wet dreams. Right. And it, they still think that that's bad and is a sign of like gonorrhea or or, yeah. so, or like an imbalance in bodily fluids or something. That the semen that comes out during his wet dreams, right. the nocturnal emissions, are the same. It's it's a symptom right. of the same thing as gonorrhea. And so he's right. going to eventually die. Right. And it's all very confused. And so he studies himself. And he's like, okay, well, if I'm going to go blind or I'm going to die of gonorrhea symptoms, then like... Fine, but I'm gonna I'm gonna pay attention as it happens, and yeah. this is as he's an older like I guess he's sort of a doctor or a scientist at this point. Yes, well, he was documenting his demise during puberty when okay. all of this was going on. Okay, and then he found so he out thought, that he, he thought, wasn't going to die. Right, so he thought he was documenting his own like death, basically. Right. Like he's ill, and he's like, okay, well, at least we will know more about this at the end of the process. Right. But he was still young because right. once he found out that he wasn't growing hair on his palms, he wasn't going insane, then he went to medical school mm, okay. to become the sex education that he felt he deserved. And you played him. I did. That and I got awesome and we you. rode away on a scooter. We did. And <laughs> Nick worked really hard to put a sperm on the license plate as the scooter was oh, wow. moving. I've never noticed that. Oh man. Because it was our goal then to have a a hidden sperm in every single episode. And so we did that for about 20, and then we're like, fuck this. (laughs) (laughs) This is too hard. So if you want to go back and look at all of the sperms in the first 20 episodes of Sexplanation, you can try and find them. We just gave you a hint as to where exactly one of them is. (laughs) Um, Yeah. I was looking at the comments on that video, Mm -hmm. and somebody said that they had just had the experience where their boyfriend – had been told by his parents that he was going to go blind from masturbating too much. And so I'm just like, still this is 2017. Because that's what I wrote. There it. would be so many blind people. Every, everyone would be blind. How is that still? So here's when I usually introduce the podcast. Mm-hmm. I tell them what it means for me to be a sexologist right now. And I have that I have an immense gratitude for the sexologists who have worked before me, like Havelock Ellis, teaching people that wet dreams aren't a sign of premature death and identifying ways to prevent actual causes of death like syphilis. And then the fact that I have about myself is that I masturbate and have since I was around 13 years old. And my current curiosity, are there still so-called educators teaching students that masturbation Mm. can lead to blindness, insanity, and death? And there are. Uh, Educators, like people who like... So you're saying this was a this was a parent, parent. but I I mean that's an important educator in your mm-hmm. life. Yep. Yeah. Um, rough. Yeah, rough. What were and you told about masturbation? Very little, oh. other than it's normal. Oh, yeah. that I mean that's huge. That's really the the most the, important message. Yeah. Aw, who told you that? <laughs> uh, my parents. Both of them. Uh, I think that I weirdly enough had my first sex talk with my mom, where it was like, here's what sex is. Mm-hmm. Here's some th- changes that hap- are happening and like, yeah. But I had th- th- I had conversations about this with both my parents during puberty. Same. 
Yeah. yeah. I remember coming back from high school doing some volunteer project with a bunch of guys and they were all talking about masturbation and, mm -hmm. and I went and told my dad and he was like, yeah, it's okay for you to masturbate too. Nice. Like, on it. <laughs> <laughs> and here's some YouTube videos. Uh, I do think about how how it's both like this this sort of double-edged thing with online media where if you really, like if you're like, I want to know about a thing, you can pretty much figure out about a thing. But if you are less in the way of like, please tell me the correct understanding of this and more in the way of just sort of like, I've come across this pornography. Mm -hmm. That's still easy to get a not right idea of what sex is, and right, uh, which is discouraging. Because my my wish would be that we had this sort of all of these hangups about how to have these conversations in school, or some parents would have a con uh, hang up about how to have the conversation, or a kid wouldn't want to have them. And so now at least you can go and you can watch this explanations video or any of a number <sighs> of other great YouTube creators. But you could also just be like, well, I'm not going to like seek out that. I'm just going to sort of glean information from watching porn all day. Yes. Hopefully it's, there's a combination. Yeah. And, hope, and some knowledge that like this is fantasy when right. you're watching porn. Especially because – so the stat is that age 11 is the average age at which kiddos see porn for the first time. So average, mm -hmm. which means half of them are – I wonder what it know. was for me. You don't I imagine the first that time that's you saw gone porn? down in the oh, last 10 years. Oh, because of the lot. internet. Yeah. Yeah. Because you and I grew up without the internet until we were what? Yeah. Middle school? I mean, I probably, yeah. I, I had, so I was born in 1980 and I probably downloaded my first naked lady in <laughs> 1997 or 96. Probably that'd be my guess. Yeah. And I had like floppy disks. Like those 1.4 megabyte floppy disks with just yep. low res pics yep. of, you know, Playboy style nudity. Yeah. Which is very different. Like, I feel very different from like Hustler style, like penetrative yeah. porn. I also like inherited some magazines from friends or something. This wasn't what we were supposed to be talking about. But, and, and like my dad was like, found them and he was like, this one is fine. This one I'm taking. Oh, so, like, he was like, this is not, and like, talk to me about like, why this particular kind of magazine wasn't okay, uh, which is very like now probably would be considered tame by internet standards, but still, yeah. oh, I love your dad. You already know that though. <laughs> like, that to me is how I wish every parent would talk to their kiddo mm. to, to explain to them the choices that they help them make about sexuality. Like mm -hmm. last night, one of my daughters asked me why her sister, my other daughter, could spend the night at a boy's house. And I said, why not? And she was like, oh, yeah, she is 16, which in our house is the age at which you can become sexually active because mm -hmm. it's legal. So, <laughs> ha you know, being able to explain that to her and being able to, to talk that out rather than, like, no, you can't spend the night there because mom says or – Yes, your sister can do whatever she wants because right. I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. There's there is a continuum of what is what is okay and allowed. Yeah, just ah. And it changes as you get older. Say the sex things. Yeah. Let's do a mention of okay. one of our sponsors real quick here. There are some of you I want to take this moment to thank for supporting comprehensive and honest sex education. Those of you who fund Sexplanations Podcast on patreon.com slash sexplanationspodcast because you make me smarter, you make me work smarter. Laura Schuster, Donna Flint, and the Millers who pledge at the boss level, this is my high five to you. Should we do a high five? Yeah, round those mics. Each week on Sexplanations Podcast, we do a multiple choice question to celebrate these sexplanauts. Now it's time to hold our Testies. The National Survey of Sexual Health and Behavior, which is like the yeah. most recent big sex study, okay. found which age group had the highest percentage of people who had solo masturbated in the last year? Okay. A, 18 to 19. B, 20 to 24. C, 25 to 29. And D, 30 to 39, which is our age group. I'm going to go with the second, which is like 20 to 24. Was that the second one? Mm-hmm. I'll say that one. Okay. I have no good reason why I said that. No? None? I mean, I get like sort of, I don't know. I feel like that's sort of where you're at peak desire. Okay. But maybe not, I don't know, but maybe you're sort of like have come in, like you've come into being comfortable with your body in full. 
on average. Yeah. Over the bell curve. Yeah. I would have thought the same thing as well. The answer is C. Hmm. The peak time frame of a cohort masturbating is 25 to 29 years old. Hmm. And within that, the uh, percentages are 84% of men and 72% of women aged 25 to 29 had masturbated within the last year of that study. Hmm. Which wasn't that long ago. The study is mm, seven to ten years old, and it might. So and they, that so might they do, be they younger. Only, did they only do this every seven to ten years? The study. Yeah. This is the. It's like sex. To census. my knowledge, this is the first time that they've done okay. this study, and it was a study to replace the Kinsey research that okay. was done a long time ago, like a mm-hmm. hundred years ago. No, not even a hundred years ago. Like fifty years ago. Yeah. So. I think that the number will probably shift to where you and I believed it was, your early 20s, because mm-hmm. more people are becoming comfortable with their sexualities earlier because yeah. they're getting permission, right? When they go to college of like, oh, yeah, mm-hmm. it's totally cool to masturbate or they're getting permission from sexplanations, et cetera. <laughs> uh, so we'll, we'll see how hmm. it goes. That's fascinating. Yeah. It's fascinating to me that it is so low. Who are the, who are the 15% of guys who haven't masturbated in the last year? I don't know. They're, they're having sex. Oh, I see. (laughs) (laughs) Who does that? (laughs) (laughs) I mean, and there are people who aren't driven to masturbate. Right. Yes. I am not one of them. Yeah. But I think it's possible. So then we go from that age group, the 25 to to 29, to our age group. I'm 35. You're 37, correct? Mm -hmm. According to this study, 80% of men in their 30s and 63% of women in their 30s have masturbated in the last year. So it dropped by 4 and 9% respectively. Yeah, it's inter- it it's, would be interesting to know whether that's – like if you've been studying this for a while, you would know whether that was sort of the trend before they got into their 30s mm-hmm. or if that's, that's actually a decrease that happens from a higher number. And it's probably a little bit – it may be both. You want to fund a longitudinal study I mean, of masturbation? If, if it's not done every year, then I don't – like, to me, there's no reason why this study shouldn't be done every year because, like, that's – I feel, like, very useful data. And if no one's funding that research, then that's dumb. I agree. It is very hard to get sex research funded, though. Well, that's ridiculous. So I'm just I'll just saying. call up my friend Bill Gates <laughs> be like, I have a tip for you. Uh, like, there's why aren't we doing this every year to sort of have a better idea? And and also in other countries. Like, I don't know. I absolutely agree with you. And I think that the study actually needs to be writ- rewritten as well so that mm. it's not just males and females, but that there's sure, also yeah. an intersex category and mm-hmm. that it is longitudinal so that we know, is this just a cohort that's super sex positive and horny, et cetera, or some maybe mm-hmm. like life experience happened to them that changes their behavior? Right. Or is it really just what's happening in that age group for people? Mm -hmm. Because I think maybe the reason why the amount decrease is because sex drive decreases, but also maybe more people are partnered. Yeah, that was going to be my other reason why I didn't go older. But mm. Mm -hmm. talk about this stuff all day. Good. Let's do that. But first, you want to do kegels? Okay, just quietly right now. Well, no, we do it to uh, (laughs) um, (laughs) – We do it to a plug from adamandeve.com uh, okay. because they're another one of our sponsors. Did you bring a kegel sizer? I didn't. I just do them all on my own. Okay. I, for, I thought those sunglasses for a second because I couldn't see them behind my <laughs> water glass were some kind of device. But no, it's just it's just sunglasses. Yeah. I think if you kegel size those, they would yeah. snap. <laughs> <laughs> do, do some Have you used exercising. my kegel sizer? I have not. Okay. I've seen it. Yeah, it's pretty sturdy, and it's got metal parts, <laughs> yeah. so it can really take on your thighs, Hank. That yeah. the sunglasses, not no. so much. But you can do kegels just by squeezing the muscles that you would use to stop and start urination. Mm-hmm. And for you, actually, because I'm guessing you have a penis, you can do it when you have an erection. You put like a tissue or a towel, depending on how strong your boner is, and then you can do movements that would bounce your penis up and down. Sure. And that's doing a kegel. Just lifting. Yes. Just, do you even lift, bro? <laughs> with your with your penis? <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So it's called I'm... main squeeze. Main squeeze. Uh, uh, uh. 
we're going to strengthen our PC muscles by doing a long squeeze or kegel every time I say Adam and Eve in this message from okay. adamandeve.com. Did you squeeze? I did. Okay, good job. <laughs> I mean, maybe I didn't. You'll never actually know. I'm a very yeah, good liar. That's true. <laughs> I could just say Adam and Eve a whole bunch, though, and then you'll be really sore tomorrow, and then I'll know. <laughs> AdamandEve.com is an online store of adult playthings for your sexual shopping adventures. Adam and Eve sells handcuffs, blow-up dolls, porn, vibrators, massage oils, and books on how to have better sex. Scroll through hundreds of options at AdamandEve.com. Adam and Eve will take 50% off an eligible item when you check out using promo code SEXPOD at AdamandEve.com. Adam and Eve will also ship your goodies at no cost to you if you live in the U.S. or Canada. Thanks for the cool oh. deal, Adam and Eve. <laughs> That's really good. It's a good segment, Lindsay. I really like how you incorporated the sponsor. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Adam and Eve, for your support. Yeah. Um, oh, so many things to scroll through and, and, and acquire. Right. We have an Adam and Eve here in Missoula. I've never been. Oh, my gosh. Hank, wh what? I've, I have never been to any... I mean, I've been inside of, what are they called? Sex shops. Sex shops. Sex boutiques, adult boutiques. I was just thinking about adult boutiques today. Yeah? Because I was, driving past, I was driving past the Adam and Eve billboard. Okay. That's on 3rd Street. And uh, it's these, it, the billboard is these two, is like two like 22-year-olds, mm -hmm. like tugging on each other's pants mm -hmm. a little bit. And I was just thinking to myself, I wonder like how the marketing for that works like is it better for all ages to see a couple of 22 year olds or are they really trying to get the 22 year olds in the store both yeah i mean sure but i also i'm always looking at them and like there's the the like hot lady outfits like the lingerie mm -hmm. and i'm just like who like i don't know my my <laughs> first thought is like if you can pull that outfit off mm -hmm. you don't what do you need to make that such a what do you need why do you need that even do I need to take Catherine on a shopping trip? Sure. <laughs> um, uh, but my other thought was like, it's starting to feel, and I don't know if this is just me personally or if this is sort of a broader thing, like that it's not such a weird kind of skeezy thing. Like it used to be. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, even now, like you can't just put a sex boutique on the main drag in a town. It has to be like a block off or like, like I feel like you can't, just have it there. You can't have it next to like the yarn store and the, um, you know, you know, the breakfast place. It's like, you know, the, the one in downtown Missoula is like two blocks away from the main strip. I think though there are cities where it's right on yeah. the strip. Yeah. It just depends. Well, I remember reading some articles about people who were trying to open one up in Missoula and them being like denied over and over again the, the locations they wanted. Oh. And then they ended up in our old building, the Radio Central building, where we used to be, and oh. which is just a terrible location for retail. And then they yeah, closed. Yeah, it is. It doesn't get any sun. Yeah, I'm, I was just th thinking about how, it, like, in my head, it's starting to feel like this isn't a skeezy thing. This is like it's a place where you go to get to go shop, like the way you shop for anything. Right. I really hope I that had you to turn go into there. a thirty-seven-year-old before that happened to me. That's okay. Apparently, you have a lot of sexual years to go. Hopefully. <laughs> Yeah, hope hope that. Uh, I mean, I guess we you say you could say that about any of my years. Yeah. Um. I hopefully all the years I have left are sexual years. Aww. Um, and hopefully there are many of them. But we all are going to die, and after that, we will never have sex again. Okay. It's it's just a it's a requirement. My dear Hank and John po podcast contract is that I have to talk about <laughs> death at least once every podcast I'm on. So. Done. This podcast is brought to you by Dear Hank and John. It's it, uh, available wherever sound clouds are. <laughs> podcasts. I love your podcast. It's so good. I like it too. Uh, it's also just very nice to have an email always full of questions from people. So whenever I'm bored, like uh, hanging out with friends, I can be like, here, here's a question. Is it okay for Eve to, to send all of her grandpa's emails to spam because he keeps emailing her once every hour with articles from the local newspaper that she doesn't care about? Yes. I've already done that to my grandfather. <laughs> yeah, that's, that was Matthew's thought too. Permission given. <laughs> yeah. What was the question that I got recently? Oh, is it legal to hump a dog? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it depends on what you mean. Just like you going up to the dog from behind 
grabbing it by the hips right. and then humping it. With your clothes on. With your clothes on. Yeah, I guess. Well, I'm going to find out because I think it needs to be a sexplanation. You're going to find out if it's by legal. like doing it in front of a cop? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, research. Uh, no. <laughs> no, just a- ask yeah. it, like look yeah. at asking around. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like, you're not allowed to have sex with a dog, but dogs hunt people all the time. Well, and it's a dominance that's, thing, that's right? Allowed. So, well, sometimes it is. What's been said it is, isn't. like, I have been jizzed upon by a dog. Damn. Like it was like, rum, 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 and I was like, off, off of me. And then I was like, what is that? And then I realized. Did you put it under a microscope? I mean, no. <laughs> I did not. That was not my first thought. I wasn't like, Scott, I was like at a party. I wasn't like, excuse me, guys, really great party. Your dog just on me and I got to go. I can't tell you why. I'm just like, not even going to explain. Um, yeah, no, I didn't. Do dogs have weird sperm? All different species have different sperm. But like? Head, tail, head, tail, head, tail. But different shapes. Okay. And different lengths and different. Well, I don't even know what human sperm looks like, except but from like illustration. I've yeah. never looked at. Oh. Human sperm under a microscope, either. Let's just have a microscope show. Could you just no, start I a want microscope to ha- I, show? So, I recently bought a cheap, cheapo microscope that just like plugs through USB into a computer, and it's like fascinating. I, I saw your aphid. Yeah, amazing. I did, I did my aphid thing. And, and I got it because I want to do an episode on fabric because I'm super fascinated by this stuff that touches our bodies all the time and we have no idea how it's made. And it turns out to be extremely complicated and cool. Mm. Um, that's but awesome. I don't think that the microscope I have right that I got is high enough quality to do that episode because I think that you need like a full HD and this is not. Um, it's really grainy and but so I think I might fi- like I might break down and get like a thousand dollar microscope and at that point like maybe it's just close it all down. That's all I'm doing. Everybody's everybody can you can fend it for yourselves. I'm out. I'm not helping with any of the things anymore. I'm just doing my microscope show and time lapses of shipping ports. Which is my other my other great hobby. I just love to watch container ships my brother get did loaded and unloaded. That he posted on YouTube. I wonder if you've seen it. A time lapse of container ships? Mm-hmm. No, maybe. I've watched a lot of them. They're fascinating. Yeah. Okay, so if you get this microscope, <clears throat> mm-hmm. please let me know. Because I would love to gather the things for you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know the story of the first microscope? Uh, no. Okay. Anthony von Leeuwenhoek. Yep, that's a familiar name. Yep. He invented the first microscope, and he supposedly did it with his research assistant, Johann Hamm. Okay? So they're in the lab. They want to see if this thing works, right? Like you and I. is like, oh, okay, what do we have access to? Yeah, what do we look and at? And so they came up with spermatozoa and white blood cells, which means so someone was like, I'll uh, cut my finger. And <laughs> you <laughs> masturbate. <laughs> who, 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 got, who, who drew the short straw? Uh, right. yeah. Or, I mean, I don't want to put anything on these guys, but if I was going to write the fanfic about these two lab friends, maybe it, maybe it was mutual. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Kinky. Okay, I, if you had this microscope, mm-hmm. you when you get this microscope, your first thing is fabric? Yeah, I mean, that's what that's that's sort of the thing that I'm really into right now. Are you going to look at your sperm? I don't know. Now that you've said it, maybe. I mean, now that I've said it, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> like, how can you not want to see your sperm? Oh, yeah. my gosh. Well, it's like Destin from Smarter Every Day will come on the Project for Awesome stream every year with his microscope and be like, what do you want to look at? And we're like, money or, you know, fabric or sperm. your blood. Like, he cut himself one day and it did not occur to me to ask him <laughs> to, look at his, to look at his sperm for oh me. Oh, my gosh. That, yeah. I mean, that story but is that really was the, That was like the first thing. And we're like, well, what are the what are the things we can look at? And that's probably pretty fascinating to be like, what is in what is this stuff? Well, because I'm told that if you have an egg nearby, yeah, that the sperm you can mix them up, uh-huh. and then they'll all go and start like swimming to the egg. Well, getting an egg would be harder. Yes, I mean, I could work really hard to collect though. It's just finding it in the collection. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh wow. man. Yeah. Microscope. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like work. Somebody must have done that at some point. Oh, lots of people do it. To fi- find to... the egg? <clears throat> find the one egg? Or maybe I'm thinking of in, vit- in vitro, right? They're probably right. That's pulling it directly from the, from the ovary. Yeah. yeah. But that's expensive. 
And so you yeah, and one comes out every month, so you could just be collecting them that way. All you got to do is a lot of searching, a lot, yeah. a lot, like not possible. The no, it's... definitely possible. Okay, right. you see how so, much water I have in my glass? Yeah, I would say it's that, especially for me. I have very light periods, but that's how much. So about two shot glasses worth of yeah. Of, okay, that's Menstrual not blood. that much to go through. No, I mean, but but I think it might be if you if you're thinking about how big an egg is because it's about <laughs> now you're drinking the water and that made me a little <laughs> uncomfortable um, because the egg like it's not about like if you have a needle in a haystack, mm -hmm. you know, if the haystack is much smaller but the needle is also much smaller, it's just as hard. So you might, but I, I think that a human egg cell is pretty small. It is, but supposedly it's visible with the human eye. Oh, it's huge compared to sperm. So much so that when I, I so I went to Henry Reich's office. Mm -hmm. Am I saying his last name? I okay. Now that you've said it, now Henry, I, I can't remember. Henry, for Minute Physics, I went to his office and I was trying to, I was trying to see how much more mm -hmm. an egg weighed if it had been fertilized. And his comparison for me was that would be like a human being that had had a pea. Had it eaten a pea? Like there's no, not had a pea, <laughs> eaten a pea, that it wouldn't make right. a difference at all. Sure. So that's the size difference. All right. Well, now now that I know that it can be visible with the, the, the naked eye, then I understand why people have found eggs and, and can <laughs> confirm that that's what's going on. Because I, I often like, I think about things like, uh, the, here's what here's what a period is and here's here's why and how it works. Um, mm -hmm. and, and being like, yes, I accept that. But like, who's the first person who was like, all right, we're going to go through and we're going to find the egg. We're going to make sure that we know, like, or maybe didn't have any idea at all what was happening. And so like, I would love to know when we were first like, yes, menstruation is part of the whole system of female fertility and it's this monthly cycle in which the egg gets deposited and there's ovulation and there's all these other parts of the cycle and like who documented all that and who figured it out because there's so often we know these things and mm -hmm. we never even we, we're just like yes we know them but we don't think about the fact that we figured them out right um and and it probably wasn't that long ago that we figured it out it would be great for vlog brothers or sex explanations or sci show we've or got a lot we've got a lot of things to talk about things on you could do an Easter special. Ah, eggs. Where you look for my and egg fertility. in my blood. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay. I just got, so I got this microscope and. Yeah, yeah I don't I mean, Like to me, it's like any other fluid and I'm just so fascinated by it. Yeah. Or the, the microscopic images of tears related to different emotions. Have yeah, you seen that? Yeah, I've seen this. I don't know how I, I don't know how I feel about it. I've, uh, this, uh, I have, I have, yes. I, I want to, I want to see that. I just want to see that replicated a bunch of times. But I, I do completely accept that, like a deer might have a different, like hormonal composition or, or like a different amounts of salinity. But I also know that if you have, if you like grow a salt crystal a dozen different times, it's going to look pretty different each time. That's true. So okay, well, you could also do this but research. I could if I had a microscope. Okay. And I made all my employees cry for different reasons. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Who all right, who who wants to who wants to cry for what reason? Only one person gets from laughter. <laughs> Only one of you. Everybody else is pain and sorrow and frustration. Yeah. That reminds me of the man who had himself stung in different parts of his body to see which ones were the most painful. Like why? Why why why? I don't know. Science. I don't that, yeah, I mean there's people are always getting tattoos and they're like, oh, it hurts much more if you do it here than there. And I'm like, oh, well, just don't do it anywhere then. Are you going to get one? No, I don't think so. I'm 37 years old and I don't have any tattoos. I feel like it's just a, it's like a streak now. It's like how I've never smoked a cigarette. I'm like, I can't smoke a cigarette now. It would ruin my fact that I can say I can have never smoked a cigarette. I'll smoke a cigar. I'll smoke a pipe, but never a cigarette because I want to be able to say that. Okay. That's pretty cool. <laughs> if I get a tattoo, I'm getting like a thousand. What? That's what I'm saying. I can't just get one tattoo. Why? I don't know. I feel like if I if like I you break the seal and it's time for it's time for like you got to get like my whole life documented on my body. Oh. And that's how I feel. Mm. I'm not saying it makes sense. Okay. I mean, I feel the same way about the streak of not having tattoos. Not having tattoos. I don't have any, yeah. but I I want to possibly get one. 
You want to know, know what it is? It all ties together. Okay, go. It's the image of the first microscope. Oh, that's but good. That's a really good tattoo. It's mm, no, because it looks like a little paddle. Like like a fun time paddle. Yeah. Hmm. And so it's just like a blob, really. Right. Well, maybe you could get an artist to like fancy it up and make it look a little more like what it is. Okay, sex will not get on task. <laughs> Good. Design me a sexy microscope. <laughs> it's a good Halloween costume. What are you going as this? I'm a sexy microscope. Mm. Yeah. Kinky. Or sassy, as the uh, as the the uh, the Halloween costume catalogs say now. Instead of sexy, they say Teletubby, sassy. They'll say sassy. Oh, interesting. Is that because they're now know. reaching out to twelve year olds? I don't. I don't. Eight year olds. The whole. The whole. The whole thing. The whole sexy Teletubby thing. Didn't you uh, say something at one point that you wanted a sexy Marie Curie, Curie yeah. outfit and people pulled it off? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, yep, it can definitely. be done with anything. I've seen a sexy hot dog costume. It's possible. I'm going to pull up the episode mm, that we did a together. A hot dog is kind of almost sexy on its own. <laughs> Are we going to watch our episode? We're not going to watch it. Okay. Unless I'm you read some want comments. to. I feel like you summarized it really well, but we're going to read some comments. Do you know that people didn't even recognize you? I didn't have glasses on. No, but. Yeah, when I take my glasses off, I'm pretty much incognito. That's fascinating to me. You want to see? Yep. That's true. Yeah. Different guy. I never don't wear them. Because you don't want to be the Because I can't guy. see. But you could, You can you not wear contacts? I don't have contacts. I'm sure that I could wear contacts, but then I would have to have them and all of the related paraphernalia in my drawer. And then I would have to have another drawer because my drawer's already full. My drawers are full, Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't have this contacts. This seems like a ridiculous argument against contacts, but okay. <laughs> I mean, you do look like a totally different person. Is it better or worse? <laughs> You look, what's the word? Careful now. Softer? Mm. Whenever Rounder? I take my, whenever I take my glasses off, I think to myself, you look tired. No, I don't think you look tired. Yeah. I feel like you can see the bags under my eyes better when I'm not wearing glasses. You just look like rounder, softer, uh, more puppy-like. When I've got my glasses off, you look more Asian, interestingly. Oh, that is interesting. Can I see your glasses? I got... Getting sort of more of Because this is not how the world looks to you when you don't have them. Holy mackerel. <laughs> Are you okay? No, I have worn your glasses before. Did you know that? In, um, Shrimp, I don't, you I, had your glare-free ones. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I was dressing up like you in one of the episodes. I don't know if you know this. Oh, my gosh, Hank. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I have to squint to even yeah. see okay well yeah i can't see well without them so i have them on all the time they're part of you and now they got passed on to your offspring he can he seems to have perfect vision right now he seems to be able to see everything from a long way away like he can identify people from way across the room but doesn't i he might get worse yeah yeah because you i hope you didn't see the world like you do oh, now I think when I you did. were a baby yeah Oh I, I I got my first pair of glasses when I was like pre-K. But up until then, can you imagine? Yeah, I mean, you, just, you don't really know what's up. I mean, the nipple, that's all That's all by feel and smell. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> radar, baby radar. So uh, in the comments, most people are saying that they couldn't recognize you. Because I looked softer, apparently. I think you do. <laughs> There's less definition mm -hmm. to your face. It's more yeah. um, more skin. <laughs> Thanks. Age Regression One asked, I have a weird question. If you have two sets of genitalia, be more likely to have what dreams? First of all, this is a question I honestly don't know the answer to. Can you have two sets of genitalia? I wouldn't say two sets, but you could have two parts of certain organs. Like you could have two penises or you could have right. two vaginas or two uteri. Okay. That happens. I, I suppose you could have two sets, right? Diversity. But m what I have <laughs> not seen but, but I've read about are yeah. multiple organs. Okay. So if you had two penises, are you more likely to have wet dreams? Ask, ask a kangaroo. Yeah. They have two penises. 
Uh, and the <clears throat> kangaroo yeah. female has four vaginas? Something like that, yeah. yeah. That seems like overkill. Well, if you want some to get lost, if you're like, you kangaroo are not getting to the eggs, I'm going to divert you with my fake vaginas. Oh, I've got fake ones. This person says they want to ride on a moped with you. All right, anytime. Please do more characters. I love <laughs> them so much. <laughs> There's no science-based questions here, Hank. But you know where they are? Because I would love to hear your answers on some of these things. Okay. The most recent episode that we did. I don't feel like I'm well prepared for that. But To just have fun? No. Well, I'm prepared to have fun. I, but I don't. But I didn't know that I was going to be answering science questions. No, and no, no, not I, science questions. Okay. okay. How can we know if we are watching porn that is ethically uploaded? I don't know. Ethically uploaded or ethically created is my sort of more yeah. serious concern. I mean, there's certainly like piracy and all that. You want people to get credit for their work. Yeah. I think that there's there are places that kind of specialize in that. Mm -hmm. That pornography that's like everybody's down with this and everybody's treated well and. They, and that's sort of like a part of their mission. And, and and you can kind of tell just by watching to some extent, too. And it seems sort of like feel more equal in the thing. You mean the performers? The performers, yeah. Well, for me, one way to do it is if it's coming from the performer's site. Right. Right. Or if it's coming mm -hmm. from a reputable site. Or if you're paying for it, it's more likely to be ethically uploaded. Hmm. But there's a, are there, are there some places that you know of that are more sort of like all about the perform. rights the rights of the of the performers? Yeah, Tristan Taramino makes ethical porn. For example, she'll go to a performer that she's really into that she mm -hmm. thinks they're hot and wants to work with, mm -hmm. and then she calls them on the phone and says, "Who do you want to have sex with?" Right, and then they base the entire pornography on that person's hmm. pleasure. And then so on and so on and so on. And everybody yeah. wants to have sex with the person that they're playing with. I love it. <laughs> it sounds like the way to do it. Were we going to talk more about masturbation or anything? Yeah. I, w I want to talk more about masturbation. Are you okay talking about masturbation? Yeah. What are your thoughts on it? My thoughts on masturbation? Mm -hmm. uh, pro. I, I get a, a little worried that like about people who think that it's – sort of unmanly or a sign of like a like a lack of game or ability to score a lady you like think it's, that people believe that i think i i feel i feel like i've heard that that oh. like like masturbation is is like a thing that you do because you've submitted to the fact that you can't have sex you can't have sex right now and so you like have no other way of getting off and so uh. you have to masturbate and if I had ever felt that way, I feel like it would have been very frustrating and it would have made me dislike myself. Aww. And whether whether that's like a sort of a, a masculine like strength thing where it's like this is how this is how I sort of value myself is through my masculinity, which is not really how I do it. Or if it's how we've been brought up to be ashamed of our wants and needs or whatever, mm -hmm. that like sort of every time you do it feels like a failure. I feel like that could cause a lot of sort of not just unpleasantness inside, but but unpleasantness in terms of the way that you act toward other people. You, you mean like masturbating, feeling ashamed about it because it's some sort of mark that you aren't part, having partnered sex. Right. And then you're just an asshole outwardly because you feel shitty about yourself. Yeah. And or like if you feel like there's only one way to have legitimate orgasms mm. that you might do things that you shouldn't do to get a partner. Yes. So whether that's sort of like skeezy pickups or sexual assault. Because you're trying to avoid masturbating and so you think that you not are... trying to avoid it, but like think that that it's an unmanly thing to do or a sign of, of weakness as a potential mate or whatever. I have always thought of it the other way around, that people who masturbate, I would equate that with like masculinity or prowess or hyperfemininity, you know, just people really being in their sexual bodies. Mm. So Good. Two, Think of it two that different way. thoughts. Think of it that way for sure. I hope so because, yeah. you know, I want it to be <clears throat> taught throughout school and I want 
people to really have that as an option so that they don't believe their pleasure has to come from another person, that mm-hmm. they can go and get off anytime, anywhere, you know, within respect of the law and ha- have <laughs> maybe that not, sexual maybe autonomy. Not anywhere. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Be in control of your own pleasure. So are you familiar with what happened with Joycelyn Elders? Mm-mm. So she was our Surgeon General under Clinton, and she was at a conference on, um, it was something UN related, but it was a talk about AIDS. Mm -hmm. And someone from the audience asked her if she would recommend um, teaching masturbation in schools as a way to prevent HIV transmission. And she basically said yes and was asked to resign because of it. But I, I am a huge fan of Joycelyn Elders, I think that that move was so smart and so brave. And mm-hmm. it's yeah. a bummer that we have had to work so hard to get away from those Victorian ideas that touching yourself is bad to, mm-hmm. because touching yourself is so good, right? We're we're okay with scratching our own itches. We're okay with picking our own noses. We're okay with, you know, mm-hmm. rubbing our own eyes. Like, why can't it be okay to stimulate your own reproductive anatomy and have it become something? Yeah. Yeah. And that was like the 90s. Yes. I don't know. That was the 90s with the president who really started a lot of the dialogue about oral sex. Yeah. So, you know, you have a president who is, you know, like. Right. Clearly sexually active. (laughs) Clearly sexually (laughs) active. Clearly, like, maybe should have been masturbating rather than asking his employees to go down on him. Yeah. Right? Well, that is that is uh that is a really good alternative to asking your employees to go down on you. <laughs> <laughs> How many presidents have masturbated in the Oval Office? Oh, oh gosh. Wow. Every single no. one of them. Cuz we just we know that that not everybody not everybody's into, into it. Yeah, but if you were the president, would you not make it a thing to masturbate in the Oval Office? I mean, I th- I feel like my answer here is definitely going to disqualify me from ever being president. So yes, I would. <laughs> <clears throat> um, I don't know. Like I've never jerked off at work, and that feels like it feels kind of like you shouldn't. Feels kind of like you shouldn't go there. Yeah. No. I work to me is different than the Oval Office. <laughs> well, I feel there like that's the work. One Oval Office. But that's there the... is lots <clears throat> of works. Lots of like workplaces, lots of, right? right? This is not your first well, workplace. The, I mean, You're not but, christening like, do you, it. Like, I mean, how many of the presidents have had sex with their wives in the in the Oval Office? Because like that, I feel like would be very hard not to do. What's the difference? I don't know. <clears throat> I I think both are disrespectful to the room. Oh, um, to, really? Because yeah, on my end, I'm like, of course <laughs> you respect the room by <laughs> masturbating in it. Like... <laughs> Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like definitely not nobody has had sex in the Oval Office. Definitely not nobody. Right. Well, so this gets into the sex and space conversation, too. Right. Because if I went into space, I would absolutely masturbate and I would totally try and have sex with whatever. <laughs> like, I would fuck that station. <laughs> Just whatever is nearby. Because you're there. It's like, yeah, you no, know. I, well, I, I think that like practically it's not easy to have sex in space, but I think that like, that's never going to stop somebody. No. And also that makes it more interesting to talk about it, which makes it more frustrating that we're not talking about it. Do you, so I had a student who did their research project on sex in space and I want to do an episode that conveys more of his ideas, but what he came up with is that one person is adhered to a wall so that they don't move. Mm -hmm. And then the other person is strapped into them with some sort of bungee cord so that they can continue to bounce. I think there's a number of different ways you can make it work. I think you could do it free floating. Uh, How could you not want to do that? (laughs) I think it would be a lot easier if one person was strapped down, though. And I don't think you would even need a bungee system if one person was secure. Because you could just use your arms and legs. yeah. Yeah, I mean, it depends on... Like, at, I don't know all my science terms, but what force you're going into that body, right? Because if you pull them this way, mm-hmm. don't they slam off of you and then they go in the other direction? Well, if they're secured, if they're stuck to the wall, they can't come either way. 
They can't. They can't come either way. <laughs> they, they can't, you can't pull them. You can't push them. No, the per the person. So you're that's just not pulling yourself. Them. Oh, against them. Okay. I think that's one of the ways that it would work. But I, and I think that some like that somewhere there is like a like a sort of list of sort of ideas for how to make it work. Ooh. But but never has there been anybody who said yes. This one was good, and this one was not. The Kama Sutra of space, as you might say. But uh, somebody knows. Do you have connections with zero gravity? Is zero gravity like an entity, a thing, like a company? A, a spa a, a, the practice area for astronauts to go where they have oh, zero like, gravity. Oh, like and you vomit like... comets. What are vomit comets? The plane. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, okay. The, the like the okay flyer. go ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which though that those give you like a minute, I think, max of free fall. So you'd have to work fast. I mean, I could masturbate that fast. <laughs> I don't know that I could have sex in space that fast. But what about those? Okay, so we're at, at time. So I'm going to like try and wrap this up. But I want to know, aren't there those, uh, they're like tubes and you can go in them. And I've seen people do dancing and stuff where there's no gravity. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, I don't think that's a thing. I, I mean, obviously it's a thing. I've seen it. People dancing on I Earth. I think maybe and like no the gravity. air is blowing up on them that holds them oh. against gravity, and so, so they like can it's just the move. big fans and like they're basically skydiving, but on or, on the ground. Yes, and there's lots of wind going yes. by them. Or in the water, right? Sure. You could practice all of these things in the water. Yeah, it would just be underwater sex with like scuba gear, mm -hmm. which I think people do. I mean, I don't think that it's like a not like a tourist attraction or something, but I'm sure that scuba <laughs> divers have fucked. But that, I think that's different to some extent. Like you can get neutral buoyancy, but then you have all the extra friction of the water like that you're moving through instead of just being air, like the fluid actually moves around you. Okay. Um, and then, and then the, the, the skydiving fans, I think that they are pretty reliant on you having a certain amount of surface area per unit of, of volume or of weight of mass. Mm -hmm. And so like you have to sort of have your arms out and so that it catches, and then if there's two people joined together, you would need a lot more airflow to keep you up because you're basically doubling your mass without doubling your surface area because mm -hmm. you're coupled and you're touching. I think you would need a bigger fan. I think we just need a, a millionaire listener or billionaire listener, or you know, call Bill Gates and say, send Lindsay into space and she will absolutely test every single model available. <laughs> Figure Doesn't it out. Doesn't that sound amazing? I yeah, I mean, I would probably just puke to be totally honest. I think that I would I have a hard time like I get air sick. But uh, it, you would puke on the way to space? Well, when you're in space, it's like you're always falling. Like that's the feeling. Oh. Of just constant free fall. And uh, like m like astronauts say like, "Oh, I, you get over that in the first 5 minutes." But I'm like I don't think I would. I think I would just always feel like I was falling and puking. Um, but yeah, I mean, hmm. people who go to space tend to spend a lot of time vomiting. It doesn't that doesn't sound like the super fun, sexiest times in the space station. So it, I mean, but like the vast majority of human experience during which we've been having sex is like was before soap. So uh, <laughs> we did it back then too. I think about that sometimes where I'm like, I need a shower if I'm going to get it on tonight mm -hmm. and i'm like that's nice of you <laughs> <laughs> um but that is that was not the case for most of human history oh true 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 and that, and that kind of always has made me a little bit like ugh, ugh, give me the willies dirty mm -hmm. dirty humans blinking mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh we we last week did an episode on urinary tract infections and about mm. how easy it is to trans for E. coli from the rectal area to the urethra and then, you know, mess up your whole system because you've got it in mm -hmm. your urethra and then your yep. ureter, bladder, kidneys, et cetera, and what a mess. But, it, you know, dogs, cats, they all get through it. They don't take showers first. It's true. <laughs> it's dirty. It's dirty. <laughs> Maybe we'll get to a point where we care so much about hygiene that we stop having sex. And at then, all. Yeah. And then the, the, that's the solution to this Fermi paradox, why there are no space aliens, because we just get super sick of how gross our meat bodies are and go extinct. Whoa. 
<laughs> we just went to a whole new level there. That's, like, oh. That's I've I mean I've heard I've heard that suggested before. It's a little sad. Like I do hope that we continue to be in each other's physical presence uh for the rest of for a long long time to come uh, as as people because it's nice. Well yeah, but, maybe not having sex though. I guess you it's not like you necessarily stop procreating just because you've stopped having sex. Like we figured that one out. Because I, I think that they're going to put a button somewhere in the neck or behind the ears. You just press the button and it causes orgasm. Oh, that doesn't sound like fun. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I don't like I don't want an orgasm right now. You know, like I want to work up to it. I want to do the whole thing. Okay, you press the button and it does the whole thing. It goes like... Okay, we're gonna have fifteen minutes oh, sure. of excitement. Then we've got ten minutes of. But plateau, is there a button on the other side that orgasm. gets you pregnant? Because we need that one too eventually. There, or do you have I mean, to like you have injection. to like make a phone call? Be like, "Hey, baby clinic, <laughs> I I need a baby." And then it's like, "Okay, well, put in your serial number here," and then you do it, and then it's like, "Okay, you, you're impregnated." Maybe. Maybe that's the future, and you never have to talk to anybody. You just push your ear button. How often would you push the button? This is going to be the new question that goes around the internet. <laughs> How often would you push the button? Um, I think twice a day. Twice a day. Yeah. Okay. Once of like, good morning. <laughs> and then the next one like, Just get good you night. out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. How All often right. would you push the button? I don't know. It probably depends on, on uh, how probably depends on how I'm feeling. How busy I am. If it was I like mean, a, if it was like a sick day, if I was like home like home alone watching Star Trek: The Next Generation, because uh, I had a, uh, the flu, I probably pushed that button eight, 18, 25 times. Okay, yeah. but why can't you do that in a work day? Because you can multitask, right? It's not like you're I having can't multitask. to thrust or rub or anything I'm like that. You can be can't. sitting at your desk writing a letter to Bill Gates thanking him no, for I sending can't. me to space and press that button 18 times. I mean, I have a hard enough time, like, not, like, getting work done with social media at my fingertips. Oh, uh, okay. I feel, no, I definitely could not write an email about Bill Gates funding sex education research while having an orgasm. This is what makes us different, Hank. Because I work in the sex field, I am always turned on, and so I have to have a way to get my brain back to focus. Two times a day, though. That's not always. Oh, no, I have to orgasm. Like, if I'm, like, seriously into sex research, I have to orgasm. I do it um, with hands free, clothes on, just by clenching, but then have an orgasm, get the blood to go back into my body and up to my brain, and then move on. Wow, that is not something that... I that I am capable of doing. That sounds like fun. Right? So if you had a button, then you could have the fun. Are you clenching right now? I'm just trying, <laughs> trying, trying to imagine what it's like to have your anatomy. It's awesome. But I <laughs> imagine having your anatomy is way cooler. Uh, well, I, I'm sure there are advantages to both. Thank goodness. All right. Well, I'm going to let you get back to your many busy things. Thank you for being on the Sexplanations podcast. I had fun. I hope you did too. Here we have some notes too because I want to thank Cinema Studios for sound, Complexly for production, Count Boogie for the jingles, and everyone who's listening. You can get bonus information about all of our episodes at patreon.com slash explanationspodcast. There's cool merch like the Red State Curious shirt that Hank's wearing and a uh, black one with rainbow font that I'm wearing at deftba.com. If you'd like to suggest future co-hosts and give feedback, please do so in the comments. And Cora Amparo, I'm still learning. Mm -hmm.